see this paper towel rack right here? It's kind of a pain in the ass to use. And today, we're gonna fix that. And while we're at it, how about I show you guys my method for making and fixing virtually anything so you too can have unlimited power! So this whole process isn't actually that complicated. There's only about four or five steps and once you have them memorized, they'll come to you naturally making the whole thing a lot easier. Step one, assess the situation. Before we start building, we should take some time to figure out what we're even working on. So pull out your favorite measuring tools, we have some inspecting to do. Now, if you're really hardcore and weirdly accurate with your eyeballs, you might get away with skipping this step. Psst, don't tell anyone, but I do that all the time. But generally, it's extremely helpful to have accurate information to work with. Knowing the conditions your part has to withstand, like heat, cold, water, stress, pressure, all of that factors into the materials you choose, the design, and how you put it all together. Hey, are you even taking notes? You look like you're just scribbling on the paper. What? Yeah. I mean, no. I mean, maybe? Well, let's see it then. Oh my god, it's snowing. Step two, designing our project. So now that we have our measurements, we'll get to the part where we can go wild with our design. So grab a pen and paper, some tea, and let's crank out some ideas. Initially, the main goal is to come up with some rough ideas to get a feel for the direction you want to go in. Consider this your rough draft. Sometimes all it takes is one sketch, but other times you're just not happy with how it's coming together, so it takes a few more tries. Mm. I should probably add that the measuring we did in the last step can come in pretty handy here because it gives us our basic requirements that'll start us on our initial design. Other times you're stumped and have no idea how to proceed. In those cases, it can be helpful to go and do some research to see how other people solve their problems. And once you have a couple ideas that might work, you can start combining the best parts into one design. And that's what we'll actually build. Step three, take a nap. What? Who wrote this? Ah, oh, never mind. Now comes my favorite part, bringing our design to life. Initially building something can seem intimidating because where do you even start? But just start small. You can make stuff with tools as simple as a file and hacksaw or a hammer and nails. Or if you're a minimalist like my uncle Bob, all you need is a rock. In my case, I've leveled up my abilities far enough to unlock the 3D printer skill, which allows me to delegate my work to a plastic spewing machine while I kick my feet up and wonder about why she didn't text me back. Hmm. Step four, troubleshooting and finalizing. This part is by far the most painful, brain-melting, soul-crushing step out of this whole process. Sometimes you get lucky and everything works right on the first try, but that's about as rare as a double rainbow or the McDonald's ice cream machine working properly. So be prepared to go back and revise some things because it's hard to be spot on on the first try. Nice. Step five. Bask in the glory of your success. Once you've escaped the absolute hell that is troubleshooting, congratulate yourself because you've successfully created something from nothing or breathed life back into something that was broken. And hopefully through the process, you yourself have grown as a person. So now that you know the steps, get out there and make something, fix something. And while you guys do that, I'm gonna go make myself some more tea. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye Ooh.